We're joined now by Scott Neal with Shooting with SOF. He's the founder and president. Uh, Scott, welcome, and, and, and how are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Uh, enjoying the, the good calm weather in Florida today. Oh, oh. rub it in. <laughs> rub it in, pal. Thanks it's, a lot. It's cooling off here precipitously, Yeah, Scott. big time. Yes. Scott, you're also a, a former Green Beret, so of course, thank you so much for your service to our country. Thank you. Uh, before we talk about uh, your event over the weekend, what is shooting with SOF? Shooting with SOF is actually shooting with soft, and it's interesting. Uh, I get a lot of comments and inquiries from civilians that are trying to pronounce SOF, but and when we came up with it, it was shooting with special operations forces. Mm -hmm. It was just a clever way to uh, bring members of the community, a lot of high net individuals who are used to charity events and fundraising, and all they ever wanted to do was just kind of interact with us. Simple as that. So you, you started the organization. Um, you know, other than what you did this past weekend, which we'll talk about, what's a, you, what do you typically do? What do you, what, what's, your, what's, your, what's your mission, and what, what have you gotten done, and what are you most proud of? Sure. Well, my, my full-time day job is I am with the Green Beret Foundation. As you know, Green Berets are the Army Special Forces, and mm -hmm. the foundation takes care of all of our ill, injured, and wounded. And I retired out of the the Special Forces here at the uh, headquarters of Special Operations Command in Tampa, Florida. And we got together, and, and we would all sit in our our, uh, our command cubicle sometimes and wondered how we would get together and shoot, and that's kind of formulated what would happen with this event. It was just a, a way to get out and get all of the former operators and current operators who are down here in uh, Florida to actually do a charity fundraiser. You know, it's, this is in Tampa, and uh, my wife moved up from Tampa uh, here to Washington, mm -hmm. and, and I, we go to Tampa all the time. And uh, here in the L.A. Times, this article says, in places like Tampa, home to the headquarters of the U.S. Special Operations Command, shooting ranges are as popular as bowling alleys. I did not know. <laughs> I, Scott, I had no idea. I've seen some here and there in Tampa, but uh, I, I, I always like Tampa, and it's always fun to drive up and down Dale Mabry, but I, had, uh, I did not know it was such a uh, hotbed of shooting ranges. Well, there you go. Let me tell you about probably the best indoor shooting range I've ever been to. And remember, I've been doing this for a lot of years. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're, you're, a lot of the courses. Your advice carries weight. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And it's, uh, it's called Shooter's World, mm -hmm. and it opened up uh, last year. And it was an idea of probably a 60,000 square foot indoor <laughs> shooting mecca. Wow. And it has, uh, I don't know, about 37, 25-yard ranges will handle up to 50 cal, and then it has a real nice retail space. And what's unique about it is it's such a family-friendly, you know, hospitable environment that a lot of people were going to it. You know, once again, just like a bowling alley, take your family, uh, see some products, shoot some guns, teach your son about, you know, the, the safeties and virtues of hunting, and, and it's just a really unique place. If it's a bowl, like a bowling alley, will they serve fries and beer? <laughs> Actually, they, they have a uh, milkshake machine. <laughs> oh, yeah. even better. Oh, yeah. Even better. <laughs> All right, so at Shooter's World there in, uh, in Tampa over the weekend, mm -hmm. uh, you had, uh, you know, we saw this article. First of all, an article in the L.A. Times, which is cool. And then when we talked earlier, I found out that NRA Life of Duty was also there, too. <laughs> so this obviously was a, was a big event. Talk about what you did over the weekend. Sure. What we did is is we take and we pair up corporate uh, corporate partners, uh, CEOs, and other high net individuals, and we partner them with a, a member of the soft community, so a ranger or a seal or a green beret, and a lot of these guys have retired in the area. And we shoot all the different special operations weapons that we have in our inventory. So you've got Glocks, uh, FN, Scars. Uh, and of course, M4 carbines, you've got 1911s, you've got squad automatic weapons, all the different weapons in our inventory uh, we shoot, and we actually teach the uh, uh, our partners how to shoot them as well. It's got it, it's you're doing this as a fundraiser, but let's also talk a little bit about how important uh, this love of the shooting sports is for folks, you know, special operations guys. This is a big deal. I, I, I've I've covered a lot of stories with folks who are are current or former military, and they just love to do this. It's part of something they've been doing all their lives. Well, it is, actually. It's part of our character and nature. Uh, a lot of our friendship and bond and brotherhood is developed at the range. You know what I mean? It's a high-stress, uh, high-character event. You really get to see who's made of what beside you. 
And, you know, even before 9-11, we spent a tremendous amount of time shooting at the range, honing our skills. So it was not only about learning the weapon system, it was about learning to shoot next to each other and trust each other uh, in stressful situations. And, and I love the quote in here uh, that, that you have in the, in the story I'm looking at. People were always coming up to us an idea about a golf fundraiser, a fishing fundraiser. You said, mm -hmm. I don't know how to play golf, I don't know how to fish, <laughs> but I do know how to shoot. So. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And and those scales, you know what? I get a lot of comments is the efficiency and how well the range is run. They're very surprised because a lot of guys, as soon as they come there, the volunteers, the soft shooters, we self-organize. There is no general. There is no officer in charge. Mm -hmm. We all kind of lay down where each one of our responsibilities are, and it's a ready, ready break. And we hold probably the most unique event that a lot of these people have ever participated in, and what what gets them is how effortless and seamless the event runs. That is so cool. So I'm reading this article in the LA Times, uh, talking to Scott mm -hmm. Neal, who's a shooting with Soft founder, former Green Beret. Um, in the uh, article, it says here a big part of the draw for donors, who each paid 500 bucks, is the coaching from special operations soldiers. And I don't. I, this next line, I don't know if you like this at all, but it says. Once shadowy heroes whose public popularity has surged with recent films such as Zero Dark Thirty and Captain Phillips. I, first of all, I, I don't know if I like once shadowy heroes. And secondly, <laughs> I hasn't wasn't there, you know, I don't think we needed Zero Dark Thirty and Captain Phillips to talk about the Green Berets. But, uh, Pop, who did that song, The Battle of the, the, uh, the uh, Green Berets, that back then? The Ballad of the Green Berets. The Ballad Green of the Green Berets. Berets. Yes, Barry Sadler. Barry Sadler. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like the Green Berets have been, uh, you know, in the shadows. Uh, so do you, what do you think of being called One Shadowy? And did we really need a re reminder that the Green Berets are out there? Well, there's a couple things. As you know, the uh, the motto of the Green Berets are the uh, quiet professional. Mm -hmm. And despite Hollywood and their best attempts to uh, portray us in their own mindset or light, a lot of times the, the public doesn't know the true character mm -hmm. or even the uh, individuals associated. And what this event turns out to be is, is the guys retire. They're leaving one network, one brotherhood behind. And what they've lost in the last 12 years in this conflict is that social network uh, that will help them in their next phases of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind if uh, the L.A. Times and Hollywood calls us shadowy, <laughs> but what I do like about the event is it kind of brings us out as individuals and, uh, you know, members of the community. And, 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 and Cameron, as we've learned with the folks we've worked with, we've known a lot of guys, former and current, who have served in special forces. And the, and the real guys, Scott, who are special forces guys, aren't the guys who are out there telling stories oh, and bragging. Right. Among yourselves, but it's right, like right. you're not those kind of guys. You, you are, usually never know. Yeah, and you're very low-key, but very, very interesting stories to tell. But you're not those kind of guys who sit in a bar with a beer in his hand who's bragging about you know all that kind of stuff. That's usually the guy who's phony baloney. And that's right. And, you know, the stories are just that. They're just stories amongst ourselves. And it's interesting, you know, when people sit by a, a family member or somebody listen to us talk. But a lot of times you'll hear more about the humor of, of our adventures than the real war stories that Hollywood and, and especially the gaming industry tries to portray. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that's overinflated. These are all great men yeah. and great dads and family members. Scott, what was 2013 like in uh, terms of fundraising for you? Was a good, a good year, bad year, neutral? And uh, what is 2014 looking like? Is just looking at the general state of the economy and just wondering how it affects you know a charity like yours? Well, you know, it's becoming more and more difficult. I think what we're seeing, especially for us and our, you know, we're very tight knit special operations community, and we're very small uh, nonprofit activities because we don't you know, take the limelight like other uh, veterans organizations that have a, uh, a campaign of, you know, injured people every once in a while. But what I've noticed is is, is America is very curious about who we are, and, and they're very helpful, and if we can tell the right story, that will lead to donations. But what's hard for me is I'm not a fundraiser, and we're not professional sponsors and marketers, so sometimes uh, it's hard to tell the right message that encourages people to support our efforts. So in 2014, I think you'll find it unique is we've been asked to run a competition with all the special operators, and everybody will get to watch that, and that will come up in May. Right. So it's a further measure for us to uh, show the public and people who we are and have a nice bit of a competition and then let others participate in that as well.
All right, so you know you you were out there to fundraise. Take advantage of our listeners and our viewers mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. How can people help? Where do they go? Give us all the uh, all the places where people can go whip out their credit cards. Sure, whip out that credit card. It's called the Green Beret Foundation dot org, and you can learn more about Green Berets. And we certainly, like I say, if if you know a special ops person that needs help, or if you really want to see those that we're helping, uh, we just produced a whole bunch of videos that actually show you exactly where these dollars are going. So I can't encourage people enough to support the Green Beret Foundation. And if you also go to the other website, Shooting with SOS dot com, you'll see all the special operations charity. And, and we're all such a tight brotherhood. I wouldn't mind it if you supported each and every one of them. There you go. Very good, sir. We will definitely do it. Thank you for your service and your continuing mm -hmm. service with what you're doing now. Scott Neal shooting with SOF or SOF. Thank you, sir. Have a happy new year. Thank you, and you, you as well.